Hey, thanks for watching Dee Dee on my favorite with my favorite groomer on YouTube. And this is Charlie, and he is like shivering. I don't know why he's shivering. I've known him so so long. I've known you, and he just loves me. Mom's sitting out in the lobby right now, and look at his eyes. They're so they're so dirty. I gotta clean those up really good. Look at that. Wow. You gotta clean those up, Charlie. You gotta clean those up. Oh, you're getting old on me. I can see some gray grayness in your eyeballs. Yeah. Why are you shivering? Why are you shivering? Okay, so he, um, Cynthia, I just love her. She's my client I'm sitting out there. She's like more of a family member than she is a client. But I've known Charlie a long time, and we're going to do a short haircut. He's really dirty. She said she tried to bathe him, and he was not having it. Um, he does love to lay down, so this is a great opportunity to use a dog up stand. But I know him so well, so I may not force the dog up stand, because I know he just loves to lay down. So if you have one of those love to lay down ones that you've known a long time and, and you work you can work quickly with the dog laying down, then do everything up here first, the head, do everything here before you have to make them stand up. Why not, right? Okay, so we're going to go. Okay, so I'm going to do a 10 all over. You can do a 7. I'm just going to do a 10 because I might not see it. She's already scheduled for the year, but it's hot here in Texas. It's 90. We're still at 92 degrees, so I'm just going to go short on the body and 7 teddy bear head. I believe that there are sometimes dogs that are scared of heights, and he is definitely one of them. That's why he lays down like this. <laughs> if I try to push it, he's like pushing back, like he's scared he's gonna fall off the table. So he stays still, but he wants to lay down. He doesn't want to see the height of where he's at. Right, baby? This is a client that trusts me, pet sitting and everything with her baby, so I just have known her a long time. And he's known me a long time, so. Well, it may seem like shivering, he's fine. He's not scared or anything like that. And we're lucky today, David's off of work, so he's like helping me here, so yay. When David helps out, we get some really long videos, so thanks, David. Remember to groom, um, groom in a way that there's barely anything to do when you get done with the bath. So if you want your lines, you want to try to get your lines perfect now so that after the bath, it's like five minutes and you're done, you know? Oh, sorry, it's loud. We're going to do a seven anyway, so I'm just kind of cutting up the, through the neck area here. It's really dirty under here. It's like that darkness here from maybe the collar. And he doesn't, I don't know if he has a collar. Sometimes it's... All right, so we're going down here like this. Take this off. Just maneuver with him here in a minute. I'm gonna use the dog up stand, maybe help him stand up without effortless. Do the inverted V here around the eyes, get all that gunk out. Every dog's different. He's got folds in here, so I wanna really clean this out. That's just how I like it. It smells funky if you don't do that. And again, I don't like the eyelashes. It makes the eyes water more, so. It's really dirty here. And I like to clean all that out, so. And I don't like the color of maroon, so I'll try to clean all that out too with my clippers here. It does not wash out. And you can use like the whitening shampoos. I don't even believe in that crap. I mean, it's like, I don't really see a huge difference to where you're having to pay for that whitening shampoo. I'm gonna come down here. Any of the hair going into the mouth will cause 
will stick to the teeth and rot them out faster. So I like to clean up the mouth area too, like this kind of stuff. You don't like that, Charlie? I'm gonna come in here. The hottest part of the body, in my opinion, is the inside of the ears. If you're ever like laying around with your dog, put your hand here. It's really hot right, right in there. That's why ear infections are so prone as well. So I'm gonna cool down the ears by taking some of this hair off here. Watch that skin flap in there, this little fold right there. You can nick that really easy. Okay, I'm gonna change my blade. I'm gonna see if he's gonna bear with me on this dog up stand. Cause he's pretty short. He did before though. Okay, so the dog up stand is just you can order these at dogupstand.com. I think they're an amazing tool to help assist the dog standing. In this case, you saw how he was laying down the whole time. Now I'm able to save my wrist, and he's just being supported here. He's uh, totally putting his body down, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he's letting me get it, so just go fast, and, and now I don't have to hold him up so cool I had this one lady was wondering like does it work I mean this this is working right David do you think it's working yeah and it's not causing any pain and it's not like a uh, it's not like a, a rope around his waist either so it's a big difference it's like a, pla a hand platform I'm gonna do the tummy without the dog up stand for safety, and then I'm just gonna keep going here. It's totally helping us, Charlie. I don't have to hold you up anymore. You got hair in your mouth? <laughs> this is loose, very loose. Again, that dogupstand.com, go order one today. That's awesome, this is awesome right here. For me to be able to just wheeze through this fast. It's not normally like that. And we're still on our tin blade, so we're just keeping everything short. So I'm pushing up on his jaw here, and I'm holding the noose too. <laughs> You're so cute. He's so cute. You see this one? We're almost done. You see this one? I personally think that like if you're like what I'm doing, I kind of try to keep my hair area clean. Um, if you do it while you're grooming, then it's totally less cleanup and you can work faster. And in, in between grooms, if someone walks in, you're ready to go pretty quickly. You're not like when I've gone into some of these groom shops, there's hair everywhere, like loads and loads of every dog's hair. It's just it'd be easier if you had a trash nearby and just kind of work it as you go, so it doesn't accumulate for like six hours. If there was pain here, he would be yelping and, um, you know, I would think he would be saying something, so. All right, we're good there. I'm gonna come do back, do the tummy, and we're gonna finish up the head a little bit and go to bath. 
sort of. I gotta do the pads to, too. You don't really want to stand up, huh? You don't want to stand up. You want to squat. This is a dog squatting. This would be the definition of the dog <laughs> squatting. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you squatting? You're not Asian. He's kind of heavy. I'm going to put him down. At least he's not jumping up and down and around, right? There you go. Stand up for me at least a little bit here. And I'm doing this light jab thing. I'm not even touching the skin, so. When I'm doing the go and reverse against the, the hair growth, then it's not gonna take it down to the skin if I'm not pushing down too hard. Okay, let me change blades. I'm gonna do the seven teddy bear heads, and I'm gonna come back and do the pads, and then we can go to the back. Watch the ear flap here and on the other side. So last time we did the same thing. So the seven head in uh, three months grows out to be what he came in looking like. So that was a seven last time as well, seven teddy bear head. So it grows pretty fast, right? Come down, go down here, create a box. And then if you want to round it later, we'll round it. Come down here with this angle like that. Hold this. This is setting the stage here. I'm gonna come and clean that back up with the 10. The seven and 10 are very close to each other, so. I'm just gonna fade that uh, seven into the ears here, but I'm not gonna take off the ears. Just fade that in like that. And now I'm going to the 40. I'm going to do the pads. I'm going to come back and do a 10 later with the face, finish up the face. He has dew claws in the back here. Don't forget to check all your feet. I just, I have his memorized and I have a file card on every client and it says it on there. Don't forget the rear dew claws. Dogs lay backwards like this, so this is not hurting his leg. I'm pulling in just how he normally would lay down on a cold tile floor. So there's a dew claw up in here, which is not normal, but it's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. I wouldn't have it removed. It's not worth it. If it's there, just leave it there. Don't worry. Taking the pads down is uh, helpful, especially in senior dogs walking on hard floors because it's like a sock. So if the pads can't touch the ground, then they don't have any leverage like your shoe. So if you have an old dog that's slipping, you definitely get the pads up. Cut. And that's on dogs that are not no normally groomed too, like sometimes rat terriers or dogs that just need a nail trim. Make sure your groomer is like, request that the pads are done too during a toenail trim. I do all that for my toenail trim clients that come into the store, when there's, wherever I can have electricity. Yeah, my wrist is hurting right now. <laughs> my wrist is tired. You go around this way. Can you see under here? I like that uh, pad exposed too, so I kind of clean that up uh, with the 40 or a 10. Just 
some mats in there. These are really long, huh? Come on, buddy. Get out of there. I would love to sell you guys the same clipper I'm using, so get with me if you want one of these. These are one of the lightest weight clippers out there. I used to use the Andis uh, two maroon one that's two speed. I had no idea I was missing out on such a light clipper. And if my hand's kind of sore with this one, can you imagine? I can't even imagine you guys using the Oster, the heavy ones. Or the Andis other one. So if you want one of these, please get with me on myfavoritegroomer.com. I'd love to sell you this amazingly light clipper. It's so great on your hands. All right, let's go back with the 10 to clean up that face area. Look at your face. Look at your face. You can scissor here too, but just if you go light with your 10, you'll be able to just take some off. But not a wild dog. Don't do that with a wild jumping dog. You might jab the eyeballs. But you also might jab the eyeballs with um, a wild jumping dog with scissors, so be careful. He doesn't want to, he wants to lay down. <laughs> I know you want to lay down. Let me get in here. Back with my 10, cleaning this up. We did the seven on the bottom of the chin and everything. Okay, we're good there. We did the pads. I gotta go back and do the nail trim. It's looking cute, what do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wanna stand up? Do this. Make sure you know where the meat's at. I'm barely just kind of edging it, so I'm not gonna get the skin at all. So just making them round. I like them round. See how this is pointy? I'm gonna take that rounded a little bit. He's so cute. See, Charlie's getting old too, aren't ya? Yeah. So just to help me out now, I'm going to do the nails and I'm going to use the dog up stand. Stand there for a minute, okay? And do your nails. So now I don't have to hold them up. It's awesome. I can't tell you guys a secret yet on doing nails, but I will have a video you'll have to pay for to watch soon. I've been doing uh, nail trimming on following vaccination clinics for over 10 years and every weekend. I've stopped doing that now for two years, all going on to two years, but that's all I would do on the weekend. So I've done thousands of nails. So I would say I am an expert at nail trimming, but that expertise, 10 years of that time, I can't give it out for free. So there'll be a video coming soon. You'll have to pay for it though. Just watch for it. It's really gonna be educational. And if you watch it, you should not quick any dog's nails anymore. Ever. Like very, very rarely will you. Once out, one out of a thousand nails you might quick. Down here. Do you want to check the ears on the inside? When I first started grooming at PetSmart, I would not do the ear hair because I felt like it was painful. But I realized after ear infections were happening that if I didn't do an ear plucking, it would hold on to residue in the ears and cause an ear infection. And I was the culprit from that. So now, ears need, ear hair needs to be pulled out and the ears need to be cleaned. It's just a must. So I've, I've seen both sides of that because I remember a, a day when I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna pluck those ears. I know it's painful. <laughs> Little did I know it does cause an ear infection if you don't.
And I, I go fast by putting the hair right back onto the hair because it grabs it for me. So I don't have to stop and move. It's just really fast to do this. And then I'm gonna wash the dog anyway. So see how it's getting in my way? I can't even see what I'm doing. So to move faster, just wipe it right there. The hair will grab it for you. And so you can just keep on going without stopping. I had someone was like, you're abusing the dog. I'm like abusing the dog because I'm wiping the dirty hair on the dirty hair. I don't understand that. So that's not, to me, that's not dog abuse. It's making it very speedy. This is an ear cleaner. Not the kind that you want to go down in the ear canal. So just clean the ears, just, uh, just right here, right around here. If I saw residue in black gunk, then we would have a problem, but I just see dirt, like a little dirt. All right, we're going to the bath. Thanks for watching. We'll be back. Thank you. Danny wants to watch the video baths. We never do the baths, so why not? So here we go. Charlie, we're gonna do baths. So pick a temperature, I do light, light cool, or neutral temperature, not too hot, not too cold. What? my bad. <laughs> Spray me. Spray me. And I like to use two hands. You guys know I'm not, I try to work efficiently, so get the dog wet. And don't spend too much time here. Get them wet everywhere. And then the ears down, and you're gonna kind of get the, because you don't want the ear, water in the ears, so hold the ears down. If you have a dog that has a lot of ear problems, put two cotton balls in each ear. And his face is really bad, so what you can do for the face is Get yourself a clean facial towel, get it wet. A real nice and drippy, a real nice drippy towel. And really get into the face here and kind of clean it out like this. Clean all those boogers and stuff out. Yeah, baby, get those out of there. And I've told other bathers that have once worked for me, like, if you don't want to clean the butt good enough, here, this is what you're going to do. If you don't want to get in there, I don't care. I'll get in there and wash all the little poop stuff. Did you like that? What are you doing? I hope I don't need to do anal glands on you. Do I need to do anal glands? I don't think we do anal glands. No, we don't. We don't do anal glands, do we? No? Okay, so real fast. This is taking too long already. Get mad. Stand up. You don't need a lot of lather. It depends on the shampoo you're using. But I'm going to go check his file really fast to see if we do anal glands today. It's really hard to see when a dog has to have anal glands done, especially if you do them internally. I pet tap him one time and it is, he knows I'm gonna do anal glands, he already knows. I'm gonna go ahead and do them because just now doing that towel, I could tell they were like, full. Oh. This is not pretty you guys, but this is um, a veterinarian trained me how to do internal anal glands and so it's not pretty because it's not, doesn't feel good. And there's an anal gland video. You can go look at that, watch that. It tells you about anal glands. The, they're like glands that get full. And this is gonna hurt. So I have him on the furthest one. So I have this much room for him to bite me and I'm gonna pull his body back this way. We're gonna use lubricant. And he already knows what's going on. But we don't do it every time. So I just feel like they're really full back here. Okay. This is one side. See all that fluid that just came out? 
Ah, oh, it stinks too. Okay. Do on the other side. Oh god. Oh my gosh, they're so full. And then that was the other side. Extremely full. Oh, I'm so sorry. He didn't scream or nothing. You're a champ. I'm glad we did though. They're extremely full. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me rinse it. Yay! That's a relief of pressure back there. Yeah. Yeah, baby. You want the soap residue out of under the armpits and under the legs are the spots that really hold on to like the soap residue. So But rinsing should be longer than the lathering. So you want to make sure you get all the soap residue off. Make sure you get under this loop. And I like to go like this. Get it, get it out of the eyeballs if there happen to be any in there. Letting my hands tell me if there's any soap residue left. You want them really rinsed off good. Or well, they'll be itchy and they'll come back, or they'll be itchy and they won't come back, and the next time they come in, they'll have a rash from the soap being uh, left in the coat. Clean your tub. There you go. Good there? Good, baby, huh? So I remember some uh, comments where people would be like, don't spray water in the eyes. I have a lot of clients that have pool, a pool out here in Texas, dogs swim. So if you think the dog's hurting itself by jumping in the water or getting a water in the eyes, I would rather rinse the eyes with water and make sure there's no soap residue than to not rinse the eyes and be afraid of working with the head. So don't be afraid to get water on its head, water in its eyes, okay? If you're worried about ear infection, put cotton balls in both ears two in each ear, one will probably be shaken out mid-bath, the last one will actually usually stay in there till the end of the bath, so don't be afraid to rinse the eyeballs out, okay? It's not hurting them. It isn't hurting them, I promise. Okay, here we go, we're gonna dry. The more you soak up now, the less you have to blow dry, so soak up as much as you can. And here in my salon, I try to keep it at one towel per dog. I don't want to do two or three towels per dog. It's such a waste. So use every inch of the towel. I mean, like, even the edges. If it, He has hardly any hair left, so it's not like I'm going to run out of dry room. But I would be using the tip of this to, you know, to soak up water if I had to. Turn around, baby. So the more I get off, the less time I have to dry, dry him with the blow dryer. He might be sensitive with his butt too, so I am watching everything he's doing. Like I'm watching how he's breathing, how he's looking around, because I mean, the anal glance is not, not pretty. Okay. And then I dry out the towels overnight, and then I wash them when they're dry, so that they'll hang up here for the night, so they don't mold if you throw them in a bin. Okay, we're gonna blow dry them. I guess you could watch it. Safety equipment. Put on your glasses. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I kind of did that so you can see it different ways. So if you want to blow dry the, the body, do it real close. Do the body first, head last. Heads are irritable. So if you would do the head first, they're going to get really irritated, and then you have to do the body, which would have been fine first. So do the body first, do the feet, and then do the head last. So that way, if it's really irritating on the head, you can just skip it. Um, you can step back and blow like this, come underneath, come side to side on the lower volume on the face. Don't blow an eyeball out. That can happen. Um, this is why I say it sounds like a jet engine. It really does, and it's really powerful. So it's really hard on a dog that's a senior, so that's why we skip the blow dry. We don't kindle dry at all here. So cage dry, we don't cage dry at all. And then the last thing is you can take the nozzle off, which you saw me do last. And if you want to really, excuse me, really detail up the face and take the time to blow dry the face, you can really get close when you take that nozzle off. Okay, we're gonna go to the groove. Okay, here we go, we're gonna finish up Charlie here. I'm just gonna touch up the tent with the tin here. Got a bump in there. I think mom knows about that, but I'll tell her today just in case. Just something to watch. Holding the jaw. What's he doing? He recording you? <laughs> What's this? What's that? I gotta get that. Check the head again with the seven here. Go bring him. Come closer. I hate that color, you know, it's just drool color, but still, it's going to take it all off. Okay. Just trying not to move him, just, you know, he's so still, so just trying to keep him still here. He's doing great, just laying there.
such a good dog, isn't he? The only thing he has is fear of heights. So he's like, whoa, I can't get to the edge of the table. I might fall off. Like, Dee Dee, don't let me get to the edge of the table. You hear mommy out there talking? He's okay. He's not like reacting to mom, but that's mom out there talking to the fudge lady. Brush that back. Take that down. You're so cute, Charlie. Let me see. Let me see one more time. Move stuff around. Yeah. Move it in here. Move. You gotta get in there. Can you stand up for me. Don't cut the dew claw off, but just remember, remind it's there. Just get the hair around it. And if you're watching, just the starting to watch my videos, my I like to do like just about dull, just a little dull on the scissors, so I can go fast and rarely ever have a nicking problem. But that's just me. Some of y'all have really sharp shears. That's okay. Do it. Do what. Do you. And if you need any of the tools, be sure to email me. Go to my website, myfavoritegroomer.com. I'd love to hook you up with your tools. I've helped so many people already, so that's kind of cool. He has a curly Q-tail, so I'm not really going to take much off of it. I'm just going to round it off here. It's like three, th three months grown, so it's not that bad. This is what three months will get you here. So it curl, it's actually curling and hooked onto my finger here. So I'm just going to curl it around like this. So cute. And you got such a cute tail. The only thing I'm really concerned about here is just it touching poop, you know? So it's so kind of good here. So. The only way you're really gonna know how a tail affects poop is if you go watch a dog take a poop. So go out there and watch the dog and know how to like get that hair out of that poop area. Like study what you're doing so you can help the client not have to clean that up. Okay, let's take a look here. You're still shivering. This is Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for watching DD with my favorite groomer. Talk to you later.